Hello, everyone. So we will be waiting for a couple of minutes till uh, 9.30 and then 9.30 like uh, Paris time, and then we can join uh, all together. So I think it's about time now, we can start. So dear colleagues, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, wherever you are. We would like to welcome you in this webinar, which is part of Asia Pacific Society for Computers in Education webinar series. Specifically, this webinar is for the special interest group, educational gamification and game-based learning, so the arrangement is like this. We will be having a one hour webinar and we will be having 30 minutes presentation and then 30 minutes for Q&A. In this context, I would like to kindly remind you two things. The first thing is, please use the Q&A functionality to ask questions later on. So later on, we can easily go through your questions and give the floor to our expert to answer it. The second thing is, at the end of the webinar, uh, Professor Wong will be sharing a feedback survey, and we would love if you could join us and share your opinion by scanning the QR code and filling in the survey. So now uh, I would like to give the floor to our presenter and expert, Dr. Munak Danden, to present intelligent educational gamification system based on the learner's personality and needs. Dr. Muna Danden has obtained her PhD in 2020 from the University of Sfax, uh, Tunisia. Then she moved to France, where she is working in the Polytechnic uh, of Hauts de France in Paris. And she is uh, now intensively working on human computer interaction through different technologies like AI, blockchain, et cetera. She is also investigating how uh, learners' individual difference and psychological states could uh, affect and impact students' uh, behaviors in game-based learning. So we would like to welcome uh, Dr. Muna Danden and give her the floor. Thank you very much, Dr. Ahmed, for this uh, presentation. It's a pleasure to be with you today. So in this webinar, I'm going to share with you some of my work. In particular, I'm going to present an intelligent educational gamification system based on the learner's personality and needs. So uh, I let you to share the screen. Can you share, see the screen now? Oh, yes. Perfect. Perfect. So the outline of uh, this work is uh, as follows. So uh, we will start uh, with uh, the introduction, moving to the problematic. Uh, our proposed gamification design 
personality effects, uh, proposed uh, architecture, experimental validation, and finally conclusion and future work. So let's start with uh, the introduction. So as we all know, due to the COVID-19 pandemic, several, several universities around the world closed their doors and decided to apply the remote uh, teaching and learning to ensure the continuity of uh, learning and as well as the safety of their students and teachers. Therefore, online learning has become an important part of our educational system. Also about 90% of higher educational institutes uh, offers now some form of online education. Also, according to uh, a survey, 75% of teachers believe that online learning will completely replace printed textbooks within the next 10 years. So several advantages, could you please move? So, uh, so several advantages of online uh, learning were presented uh, in the literature. For example, it can present, uh, uh, it is uh, flexible, convenient, and learners can access uh, the learning materials whenever and wherever they want. Also, it offers opportunities to create open online learning and you know the importance of open uh, education nowadays. Also, it strengthens the academic continuity in case of disaster and uh, uh, pandemics like in the COVID-19. But despite all these advantages, online learning has also some challenges. Uh, the most uh, two important challenges are the high dropping class rate, which may be caused by the absence of the teacher and online support. Also, learners may lose their motivation easily, and this may be caused by the absence of interactions within the learning environment. Therefore, in order to overcome these two uh, challenges, some uh, solutions were proposed in the literature, and gamification, and the gamification concept was one of the proposed solution. So gamification is the use of game design elements such as points, badge, leaderboard, chat, in non-gaming context, in order to motivate learners and create immersion uh, similar to what happens in games. On the other hand, uh, learners have different characteristics and because of that they may behave differently in uh, uh, with computer uh, based learning so learners may have different personalities memory capacity level of knowledge learning style etc therefore it's very important to take these differences into consideration while uh, preparing uh, our uh, educational gamification system in particular for the gamification uh, personality was found, was found as one of the most important characteristics that may affect learners' perception and experience toward gamification design. Uh, for example, some researchers stated that individuals' real-world actions, state, and behaviors have been found significantly connected to their to learners' personalities. Therefore, it's very important to take learners' personalities into consideration while preparing uh, the gamified uh, learning environment. So the first step, uh, please move. So the first step in the, personalize, in the personalization process is to model uh, the learners. So the learner model contains all the information regarding a learner, such as domain knowledge, learning performance, interest, uh, personal traits, et cetera. Could you please move the... Oh, yes. Yes, you can move on to the next slide. So the most uh, used methods for modeling learners, uh, which are presented in the literature, are computational techniques such as linear and logistic and logistic regression and questionnaire. So for the computational technique, uh, 
So they are uh, they are uh, complicated and uh, not uh, very understandable for teachers. Also, with computational technique, we are not able to uh, present uh, or to uh, to make uh, online intervention to help learners. Also, for the questionnaire, they are too long and uh, learners take uh, too much time to respond uh, the questionnaire. For example, for the Big Five Inventory Questionnaire for the personality, we have 44 statements. Also, this, make, uh, can, uh, this can make learners confused and learners may not reveal their true information uh, why respond to the questionnaire because they may feel that they are assessed by, uh, by others. Also, uh, with the questionnaire, we are not able to provide online interventions to help learners. Uh, so therefore, uh, to overcome this problem, many researchers focus on the use of intelligent modeling method, which is the learning analytics using learners' traces. According to Simmons, learning analytics is defined as the use of intelligent data, learner-produced produced data, and analysis models to dis discover information and social connection, and to predict and advise on learning. So here, the learners interact with uh, the learning environment. Then their traces will be collected and stored in the database and then fed to the learning analytics system to be analyzed and to use it for prediction and advice on learning. In this context, we propose an intelligent educational gamification uh, system based on learners' personalities. However, uh, however, uh, the creation of uh, the development of an educational gamification system is not a simple process because we have the many uh, game design elements which are proposed in the literature, such as progress bar, uh, yes, feedback. Uh, levels, leaderboard, avatar, etc. And adding all the game design elements at the same time does not always lead to an effective gamification. Therefore, therefore it's very important to, uh, uh, to, uh, to, uh, to take it uh, carefully or to choose uh, these game elements carefully. So in this context, we propose uh, an educational gamification system which is based on the Moodle learning management system, which is considered as one of the most readable environments for gamification because it provides ready-made game elements. So here, the gamification efforts are generally uh, aimed at improving motivation and especially the intrinsic motivation in order to increase learners' performance and outcomes. So intrinsic motivation refers to the self-interest and satisfaction that drives an individual an individual an individual's actions. And in order to satisfy learners' uh, intrinsic motivation, according to the literature, it's very important to apply the self-determination theory, which is one of the most important motivational theory in the literature, which is based on three psychological needs, namely competence, autonomy, and relatedness. So here we have to fulfill these three psychological basis, basic psychological needs in order to make the, in order to make learners intrinsically motivated. So for the competence, it refers to the self-efficiency, challenge, and motivation while interacting with the environment. And this and this can be achieved using game design elements which provide feedback about learner success to trigger the feeling of competence and challenge. And this may be uh, fulfilled using uh, some game elements such as points, levels, leaderboard, progress bar, badge, and feedback. For the autonomy, It refers to freedom in making decisions and doing tasks without any pressure. And this can be achieved using game design elements which allow learners to be in charge and make their own decision. And this can be fulfilled using the avatar and badge game design elements because uh, in our case for the avatar, learners have the freedom to choose their avatar. Also, they have the freedom to show or hide their collected badges. 
Finally, for the relatedness, it refers to the connectedness, belongingness, and caring for others. And this can be achieved using game design elements, which can trigger the feeling of relatedness with learners. And this can be achieved using the chat game design elements. So here we have a screenshot of our proposed uh, gamification, uh, gamification system, where we have integrated eight game design elements. Uh, we have here, for example, uh, the avatar, progress bar, chat, badges, levels and points, and leaderboard. All these, the eight implemented game design elements were based on the self-determination theory in order to fulfill students' basic psychological needs, uh, which are competence, autonomy, and relatedness. So to, uh, to evaluate the effectiveness of the proposed uh, gamification design, an experiment was conducted with 30 undergraduate learners majoring in computer science and aged between 18 and 24 years old. They are all familiar with Moodle. Uh, so they participate in an experiment where they took the intrinsic motivation inventory uh, as a pretest. Then they learned using the gamified and self-determined model for three months. And finally, they retook the intrinsic motivation inventory as a post test. Yes. So for the results, so results here showed that there is a significant. You can uh, you can move to see the circles. The significance. Yes. Another one. Yes. So uh, results here show that there is a significant difference between learners' intrinsic motivation in the pre and post test, uh, specifically for the competence, uh, tension and pressure, effort and enjoyment. For example, for the competence, uh, the mean in the pre test is 3.76, or in the post test, it's 5.15. And this can prove the effectiveness of the proposed gamification uh, design based on the self-determination theory in enhancing learners' intrinsic motivation to learn, which is the objective of the gamification process. So after validating our, uh, of our uh, gamification design, we move now to, uh, uh, to test the effect of personality, which is considered as one of the most important uh, characteristics on, the, on students' perception of, uh, of intrinsic motivation and learners' perception of game design elements. According to Mount, game, uh, personality uh, is considered as a stable psychological characteristics which define people's behavior and cognitive style. In particular, the five-factor model is considered as one of the most used psychological needs, especially in education, which is based on five uh, personality dimensions, namely extraversion, agreeableness, conscientiousness, neuroticism, and openness. For example, the extraversion refers to, uh, to uh, the degree of being uh, sociable, outgoing, talkative, and, and to have positive emotions. So here we have a different state, for each personality trait, high and low. For example, for the extraversion, learners with high extraversion will be more uh, sociable and uh, to have positive uh, emotion and talkative, etc. The same thing for the five dimensions. So here uh, in the literature, uh, many researchers found that personality can affect individual satisfaction of psychological needs in game environments. Also, it can affect learners' perception of game design elements. And, and this is what we are going to uh, test for our, uh, for our gamification uh, system. So first of all, we start by testing the effect of, game, uh, of personality on learners' perception of intrinsic motivation. So here, an experiment was conducted with 30 undergraduate learners, also measuring in computer science who are familiar with Moodle. So learners here took uh, the intrinsic motivation uh, inventory and the big five inventory in the pretest. 
Then they learn using the gamified and self-determined model for three months. And finally, they retook the intrinsic motivation inventory as a post-test. So results here showed that for the extra version, we start uh, dimension by dimension. So for the extra version, regression analysis showed that the extra version can affect learners' perception of competence. We, can, we see here that we have a significance. Also, uh, the importance uh, and uh, the enjoyment. In particular here, the beta for the competence is negative, which means that learners low in extraversion are more likely to feel the competence. Also, they are more likely to feel the enjoyment. For the agreeableness, you please move. Okay. For the agreeableness, uh, no effects or no significant effect was, was found of agreeableness. Uh, on learners' perception of intrinsic motivation. For the conscientiousness, uh, regression analysis showed that the conscientiousness can affect learners' perception of pressure and effort, where learners high in conscientiousness are more likely to feel the pressure. However, learners low in conscientiousness are more likely to feel the effort. For the neuroticism, no effect was found of this personality dimension on learners' perception of intrinsic motivation. And finally, for the openness, uh, it was uh, found that openness can affect uh, the intrinsic uh, learners' intrinsic uh, motivation perception. In particular, it can affect learners' perception of competence, pressure, and uh, enjoyment. So, uh, now we move to test the effect of personality on learners' perception of game design elements. So also, and also uh, another experiment was conducted here with 120 undergraduate learners majoring in computer science. So here learners took the Big Five Inventory Questionnaire, which is related to identify learners' personalities. Uh, after that, they learned uh, using the gamified model. And finally, they took the game design elements perception questionnaire. So here results showed that uh, personality has uh, different effects on learners' perception of the eight uh, implemented game design elements. For example, for the extraversion, it was found that learners high in extraversion are more likely uh, to find uh, points useful or to find it enjoyable for them. However, for the low uh, learners with low extraversion, they are more likely to only enjoy the levels, feedback, badges, progress bar, and chat. So uh, given the importance of uh, personality, uh, in learners, uh, the effect of personality on learners' experience of educational gamification system, it's very important to take, uh, to take it into consideration while designing uh, our educational gamification system. That's why we proposed an architecture of an intelligent educational gamification system, which is based on learners' personality. So here, uh, so here, this is our proposed architecture. So here, students uh, will interact with the gamified iMoodle, where, where we will uh, took uh, three courses. Then uh, learners' uh, interactions with uh, the iMoodle traces will be collected and uh, stored in a database, and then they will be fed to the learning analytics, our proposed learning analytics system. Uh, could you please stay in the, yes, in the architecture, yes, please. So, and uh, uh, after collecting learners' traces in the database, learners' traces will be fed to the learning, our proposed learning analytic system, which is supervised in Moodle which is, will be controlled by the teacher. So the supervised me in model, the learning, this learning analytics will, uh, system will be based on three layers. The privacy layer, which is to keep learner's traces in safe. 
the analysis layer, which is used uh, both for data mining and uh, visual visualization technique to extract useful information for teacher. And uh, the last layer, which is the reporting layer, which is uh, to implicitly model personality based on learners' log data and provide reports and real-time intervention to learners while learning. So uh, we move now to uh, present the personality modeling, the implicitly personality, uh, personality modeling uh, in details. So the learner personality is predicted from their collected traces using the learning analytic approach. So in the first step uh, of the modeling process, we will select and collect the data of the learners. Then learner stresses were, uh, were identified based on the characteristics of each personality dimension reported in the five-factor model. For instance, for the learners with low, with high extraversion, who are more likely to have many friends, to be more, to be, to be more interested in details, and uh, who like to speak with others and uh, be active, we will use the participation in forum, uh, participation in chat, and access to supplementary course materials features, which means we will choose uh, the features uh, who are, uh, which are uh, more related to each personality uh, trait. In the second step in the modeling process, is, which is the selection of the modeling approach to be applied within the learning analytic system. So uh, here, after studying different approaches, the Bayesian network is selected to be used within our learning analytic system. In particular, the Bayesian, uh, the Bayesian network has been the most successfully applied approach for modeling affected aspects of learners' characteristics, such as emotion and feelings, and metacognitive aspects such as self-regulation, self-explanation, and self-assessment. That's why it can be the more uh, the more convenient uh, the convenient uh, one because we are uh, talking about personality. So the first step for implicitly modeling learners' personalities using the learning analytics system based on the Bayesian network was to build a graph that contains different features associated to each personality dimension and the relationship between them. So here we can found the, our proposed graph for the features, for the proposed features for the five personality dimensions. For example, for the extraversion here, we found the participation in forum, PF, participation in chat, PC, and access to supplementary course material, ASCM. So here also we have uh, other features for each personality uh, trait, and we have different states. For example, for, uh, for the PF participate and no participation, for the access uh, to supplementary course material, many, few, or none, et cetera. Also for the personality trait, we have two states, high and low. And the next step of building a Bayesian network is to compute the probability values of each node in different conditional probability values. And this was done via a training data set based on experimental results. So here in our case, 50 learners answered the big five inventory to identify their uh, personalities using uh, the traditional questionnaire. So these learners uh, then learned using the iModel platform where their learning behaviors data was stored along with their uh, extracted personalities using the BFI to determine the conditional parameters of the Bayesian network. And these parameters will be then used uh, to extract or to identify uh, the personalities of other learners using this training data set. So the collected data are then fed to the developed learning analytics system based on the Bayesian network to analyze the collected, the other collected data. So in this context, the following Bayesian network was used, which is uh, used to calculate the probability of an instance D being in a class, for example, CG. 
moving to the experimental validation of this proposed uh, implicitly modeling uh, personality. So to evaluate the effectiveness of the proposed architecture, an experiment was conducted to evaluate the proposed approach for modeling the learner's personalities. So here, 139 participants uh, majoring in computer science participated in this experiment. So learners here took first. Could you please uh, move to the next slide? Yes, please. So here the learners, first of all, uh, answered the big five inventory. And then uh, we analyzed and compute their personalities using uh, the traditional questionnaire. Then they learned using the I model where their traces are collected and analyzed and computing uh, and computing based on their collected traces. And finally, we compare uh, learners identified personalities using the learning analytic approach and the results of the big five inventory. So personality implicitly modeling here results. Could you please move? Yes. Uh, so the results here uh, showed using the chi square test, uh, use it, uh, showed that there is no, could you please uh, move to show, yes, the p-values, yes, uh, that there is no a significant effect between learners' results in the big five inventory and uh, our uh, identified uh, personalities using the, our proposed learning analytic system for the conscientiousness, extraversion, openness, and neuroticism. For more precision or for uh, more details, the personality classification results of the learning approach are compared to the obtained results from the Big Five inventory. So in uh, the classification process, four variables should be computed to assess and compare the results of, uh, of a classifier. So here we calculated the recall, precision, F measure, and accuracy. For the recall, which is the percentage of the instance that are correctly classified within a class, over the total number of uh, instances belonging to that class. For the precision, it is the proportion of the instance which correctly belong to a class over the entire number of instances that were classified in that class. For the F measure, is computed as a combined measure of precision and recall. And finally, for the accuracy, is the percentage of correctly classified instance. So here results showed that uh, the accuracy is above uh, 0.5. However, for the agreeableness, uh, the, the recall, it's very low and it's uh, over the 0 0.09. Finally, for the agreement between the developed learning analytic and approach and the big five inventory, so the agreement here is, uh, is fair. And according to the analysis of results, the majority, uh, the majority of the wrong personality modeling results were for females. So here we provide some recommendations to be considered by other researchers to enhance automatic modeling. Yes, could you please move? Yes, here we provide uh, some uh, recommendations, uh, some recommendations uh, for other uh, researchers to enhance automatically modeling process in learners' personality. For example, course designers should consider several properties that may help in generating more learning traces to facilitate personality modeling using, for example, using other game design elements. Also to provide more collaborative learning activities using forum and chat to facilitate or to promote participation, because in our case, we use it only uh, we use it, uh, le uh, chat and forum in some uh, courses and uh, not for others. 
Uh, also to take gender differences into consideration while building a knowledge base for personality modeling system. And finally, to use several features to model each personality dimension to enhance the accuracy of results and decrease the base of a particular feature. To conclude, so this work presented an architecture of an intelligent educational gamification system, namely I model to enhance the online learning experience. The obtained results show that online learning platforms can not only be used for learning, but also for modeling learners' personalities. Also to conclude, this work can contribute to various fields and can be exploited by many people as follows. So the finding of this research can be followed as a guideline to support the design of intelligent educational gamification systems. The finding of this research also can contribute to the human computer interaction field and specifically to researchers and designers of gamified environments by providing frameworks that researchers and designers can follow to uh, can follow while designing their personalized uh, gamification systems. Finally, the finding of this work can advance research in the educational technology field by offering new tools which can be used to model the learner's personality instead of traditional method, namely questionnaire. For our future work, uh, we, can, uh, we may focus on enhancing the accuracy and reliability results of our uh, proposed learning analytic approach in modeling learners' personalities by implementing new algorithm and considering the above mentioned recommendations. Also, we, uh, we plan to provide a personalized gamification design with an AI model based on learners' identified personalities, which means to complete in the personalization process in order to keep learners engaged and motivated while learning. Uh, and finally, also we can, uh, uh, our future work can focus on integrating also the blockchain technology in uh, our gamification system for security reason and avoid cheating in the uh, in the uh, effectiveness of um, affecting uh, the game design elements for uh, for learners for example in for the badge etc and thank you for your attention <laughs> thank you so much thank you so much dr Dan. that's that was a very quite interesting presentation, combining both educational technology and educational psychology. And it was like a systematic working, starting by investigating the perception uh, and the impact of personality on game design elements and gamification. Then you move to validate the impact. Then you move to implicitly rather than explicitly like modeling uh, students' uh, personalities. That's honestly like quite interesting. And I would like now to move to our Q&A and see like questions from our audience and try to answer them. So we can see like. So, so far at least I cannot see any questions. So please, if you have any questions, I would like to kindly remind you if you could please type it in in the Q&A uh, functionalities on Zoom, so we can easily like access to those questions and uh, ask them on your behalf. Okay, maybe while <clears throat> while our audience type in their questions, I could kick it off with one of the questions at least. So uh, I have seen in your presentations, maybe in like slide 44 or like 45, you mentioned that most of the wrong, uh, like personality modeling were from females rather than males. Yeah. So may I know why, what happened or like, what's the motivation or reason for obtaining like this biased uh, results, at least from females? Uh, this may be caused by um, 
maybe because uh, males are more familiar with with uh, with games and uh, they find the gamification design or gamification system more easy or uh, or they interact easily with the, the environment however for in, for females they are less uh, they are less familiar with this environment so they may not reveal their uh, or they may not uh, interact easily, or uh, these uh, these uh, traces may not uh, really reveal their uh, their uh, true informations or true uh, behave true, true personalities. I see. And have you thought maybe on investigating how gender gender we are talking about males, females, or like other genders like transgenders on uh, like. Uh, perception on game design elements on like their behaviors within like a gamified learning environment oh yes we have investigated the also the effect of gender and also uh the gender and gamification to get uh, and the gender and personality together and their effects on learners perception of uh, game design elements and we have found a uh, positive effect of uh, of gender and it can uh, affect learners perception of uh, of game design elements for instance we have found that uh, females are more likely to enjoy the badge than uh, than male uh, learners therefore uh, we mentioned that uh, gender uh, is very important to take it in consideration while uh, designing educational gamification systems thank you thank you I think now I can also like see one question from our audience. So uh, I think uh, this question is coming from Jading. I hope I pronounced your name correctly. So uh, I'm not sure if she's or like he is. Uh, so uh, Jaden asked, did you find any negative effects of the gamified elements on any aspects of students' personality? A negative effect of personality. Negative effects of the gamified elements on any aspects of students' personality. So here we investigated the effect, uh, um, uh, the effect of personality on students' perception, but we didn't investigate the effect of a uh, game design elements on uh, learners, uh, on learners' uh, personalities, or something like that. Because uh, learners' personalities, I think, is, is stable, so it cannot be changed with uh, these game design elements. I think that the only thing that can be changed is their motivation. Uh, so the motivation can be, uh, as we have, as I have presented, the intrinsic motivation. Uh, it can stay the same at the same level, or it can be, uh, or learners may be more motivated uh, by using the educational gamification system. By, but as a negative effect to be, uh, to be not motivated or demotivated. No, we didn't have that. Okay, thank you so much. So, do we have any more questions? So I can keep asking a couple of questions till we receive uh, any other questions from our audience. So my next question is, have you thought since now you identify that students with different personalities uh, prefer or have high or low perceptions towards specific game elements. So have you thought maybe in the future uh, about designing like a personalized or adaptive uh, like gamified learning systems, which will be like based on students' personality. So for each personality trait, you will give them like some specific game elements that they like or prefer in their profile. Yes, of course. That's why in... Um... In one of my slides, I uh, presented a framework which contains the preference, I think in slide 30, I presented uh, a framework which contains the preference of each personality uh, trait for uh, each uh, uh, of each uh, personality trait uh, for uh, the game design elements. And I think that the personalized uh, gamification uh, system will be based on these preferences. 
So for example, for the extraversion, for learners who, are low, who have low extraversion, we can provide them only levels, feedback, progress bar, uh, badge, and chat. However, for learners who have a high perception toward extraversion, we found that they enjoy more the points and, uh, and the leaderboard. And uh, in addition to uh, the mentioned game design elements for low, so we will uh, provide for learners high in extraversion the eight game design elements. However, for learners with low extraversion, we will uh, only integrate the levels, feedback, badge, progress bar, and chat game elements for them. So I think that uh, our uh, personalized gamification uh, system will be based on this framework, which is based on learners' perception and preferences of uh, these elements or the tested game elements. That's quite interesting. So I would like to kindly remind our audience, if you have any questions, please feel free to type them in our Q&A like functionality on Zoom. We would love to hear your feedback and opinion and your thoughts about Dr. Dandan's presentations. So till we receive other questions, I think we can, I can at least keep going on with a couple of questions. Uh, as I said, your presentations inspired me and it gave me a lot of questions to ask about. So my next question is, uh, I have seen you talking about like blockchain. And we know that blockchain is one of the emerging technologies now. So my question is, what are your future directions about combining both like gamified learning systems, blockchain, and let's say like personalization or like personality modeling? How, how are you going like to combine all these together and for which purposes? Oh, yes. Uh, as you... Um... Oh yes, as you said, uh, blockchain is very emerging uh, these days and uh, several uh, studies combined the gamification with the blockchain technology and this, uh, this may be used for the security of uh, the system or, uh, or even to motivate the validators or the miners in the, in the blockchain system. I think that uh, researchers who are working on the black blockchain uh, may understand what I'm talking about uh, because in the blockchain, we have uh, the general participants of the system and we have also validators for the block inside the blockchain system. So uh, the gamification here may be used uh, to motivate the general learners, for uh, the general, uh, the general uh, users of the system. They can be uh, learners or uh, whatever. And uh, for uh, the miners who are working to validate uh, the blocks in the blockchain system, uh, it, it can be also uh, used to uh, motivate them instead of uh, of giving them uh, money or uh, something like that. They can use the gamification system, which has online rewards, to uh, to go to the human centric topic and also talks about a fulfilling to uh, fulfilling uh, users' psychological needs because uh, only giving them uh, monetary rewards is not sufficient because they have uh, other aspects which should be uh, fulfilled by, like the uh, psychological needs. So here gamification may also be used for uh, both, uh, both users who, uh, the general users or the miners in the blockchain, and this may be uh, personalized uh, maybe based on their preferences of uh, game elements, etc. Thank you, thank you. We're working on it. Also, we have like uh, another question from uh, Fu Yan Yu. So uh, Fu said, it seems that some of the game design are suitable for persons with different personalities. For instance, chat and levels are listed under like PPT uh, slide 30. Yes, yes, yes. Some of the game elements may be preferred by uh, by two or more uh, personality dimensions, and uh, and uh, this like that. You can uh, even uh, for uh, some of them, uh, uh, the eight uh, game design elements may be preferred by uh, the same. Yeah. So who said? 
Fu said, in other words, based on your research findings, some game design elements such as levels or chat seems can be integrated or suggested for persons with different high low in extraversion, openness, conscientiousness, and neuroticism. Yes, yes. For, for uh, some game design elements, which may be positively uh, perceived by uh, different uh, personality traits, they can be integrated in uh, the same, in uh, their uh, gamified, personalized gamified environments. We keep them, yes. We only we only move uh, the game design elements that which uh, learners perceive it uh, lowest or lower. Thank you so much, Fu said. Like how interesting. Thank you. Thank you for like uh, asking these questions and for interacting with us. Uh, we are also waiting for other like uh, audience and colleagues to share with us their thoughts. Like. To, to share their perspectives about like gamification, game design elements and personality. Like I said, the topic is quite interesting, like combining both uh, domains, like educational technology and educational psychology. So that's, that's quite interesting. So let's see if we uh, have any more comments or questions. We still have a couple of minutes, so I can like uh, keep uh, kicking it off. Then, like one of the audience also like further points points out like a couple of things or ask any questions. Uh, so my next question is: So you have talked about like self determination theory as one of the psychological like uh, theories to design uh, gamifications. So are there any other psychological theories that could be implemented or used? instead of uh, self-determination theory to design like uh, gamification? Oh yes, there are, there are other uh, motivational theory uh, rather than uh, the self-determination theory, but the self-determination theory is the most uh, used one for games and gamification. And that's why we all applied the self-determination theory in our case because we are interested with the intrinsic in uh, for the gamification we are interested with the intrinsic motivation and the self determination theory uh, satisfy this uh, this uh, motivation this type of motivation that's why we apply the intrinsic uh, the self determination theory but there are other motivational theory in the literature yes okay thank you <clears throat> so now if if we want to like make it more useful for our audience and I would like to ask you like a couple of minor like uh, technical things. So as you presented, you said that Moodle is quite uh, interesting and simple in gamifying uh, a given course. And you say there are like uh, several ready made plugins to gamify a course. So could you please elaborate a little bit just to give our audience a bit of background on how to use Moodle for gamification if they are interested to try it out in their like context later on? Okay, yes, for Moodle, there are uh, several plugins, uh, ready made plugins. For example, for the levels, for the progress bar, they are, uh, they, uh, the plugins already exist. You have, all, you have uh, just uh, to, uh, to download them, to download uh, this, uh, this plugin and, uh, and uh, to manage it and to personalize it uh, based to, uh, your, to your course and your uh, activities in the, in the course for the chat also it is uh, this already it already exists uh, in the Moodle and uh, even for the others for the other game elements they already exist as a plugins you are uh, you have all just to upload them and uh, to add them as a blocks uh, in the in the model and uh, to to personalize them according to your course. So how many how many game elements or like plugins exist which you could use them like to to uh, to gamify your course like on Moodle or are there any guidelines or guidance uh, like at least like on Moodle's uh, website which like other audience or other users could follow them in order to start gamifying their courses. 
Okay, for uh, for me, I have used uh, I have used I think three or four uh, plugins, but with the new version of models, they exist uh, even a gamification plugin. So there, are, so they exist uh, new plugins for gamification. Uh, you can apply them directly to uh, to gamify your course. Or if you have, you want to choose the the game elements, you can do uh, like me and choose uh, some game elements and search with the name of the plugin. For example, progress bar or uh, or levels, and uh, you can find the plugin and apply it and. Uh, and then to regulate them, regulate it. But in uh, the new version of mod of model, uh, there exists uh, new plugins for the gamification, and even there is a plugin with uh, the name of gamification. You have That's just to type in the plugin. That's quite interesting. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for sharing like uh, this, like. Uh, research background this technical background is quite interesting a very comprehensive and systematic uh, work that's quite interesting i think we don't have any more questions either from me or from our audience so i think we can move it in like to professor wong so he can share with us uh, yeah so the final slide so uh, as as we said once again, I would like to thank you, Dr. Monet, for this interesting presentation. I would like to thank our audience who joined us today and shared with us their thoughts, et cetera. So as you know, your feedback is quite important to us. So we would love if you could please help out and uh, scan with the QR code uh, with your mobile phone, this QR code and fill in your feedback so we can keep improving, we can keep growing uh, as a community all together. So I would like to kindly invite you, as I said, to scan this QR code and give us your feedback. And uh, hopefully yeah, we can grow as a community together. Your feedback is quite important for us so we can improve, so we can keep providing you the best we could from like knowledge, from research, from experts, from services. So thank you so much. And yeah, uh, till last time, next time, bye-bye. Thank you.